This video will sh show you how the location of the center of mass is found in one dimension. You need to know how to calculate torque to understand most of this. This video will also lay a foundation that we're going to use later on when we're solving problems using torque and summing up the forces. So to begin with in this example problem, I have two boxes on a beam. They're placed on a 3 meter long homogeneous board of mass 2.98 kilograms as shown. The question is, where is the center of mass? Now the boxes are on the edge, that means they're barely balanced right on the edge, so their weight's going to act right on the edge of the beam. To start with this problem, I'm going to look at all the different weights of the beam and the boxes. Box A has a weight on the left going straight down right on the edge of the beam. The problem says the beam is 2.98 kilograms, and it also says that the beam is homogeneous. That means that this 2.98 kilograms times weight uh, 9.8, the weight of the beam, is going to act right in the geometrical center of the beam, right there in the middle of it. Box B, 16.7 kilograms times gravity is the weight of the beam, or uh, weight of box B, and that's going to act right on the right edge. In order to solve this problem, I need to create this imaginary force. So this imaginary force is going to come up from underneath, and it's going to balance the boxes and the beam. And that's going to be my center of mass force coming right up through here. So that's the location where that little symbol is. And I really don't know where the location is. I'm just picking a location closer to A than B because box A is heavier than B. But it doesn't really matter. Now when I also look at this, I see this is creating a bunch of torques. They're forces acting on a distance. And so what I need to do is find a pivot point so I can sum up all my torques. And I'm going to choose from my pivot point the left edge of the beam. So right here where the X is. Now what this means is that the weight of box A doesn't have a moment arm going horizontally to the pivot point because the force goes right through the pivot point. So box A will not exert a torque at the pivot point because of where I've chosen the pivot point to be. Alright, so let's start looking at these distances to the forces. The first distance, I'll call it x, that's the distance to the center of mass, that's what I want to know. The second distance is the distance to the weight of the beam, and the third distance is all the way over to box B. And remember, box A doesn't have a distance because its force, its weight, is going right through the pivot point that I've chosen. Now, torques are positive and negative. Any force that causes a body to rotate around a pivot point in a counterclockwise direction is a positive torque, it creates a positive torque. Any force that causes a body, such as the beam, to rotate in a clockwise direction is a negative torque. So there's my negative torque. So when I add these up, I need to take into account positives and negatives. Because the beam is not spinning, it's not rotating in any way, I know that if I add them all up, zero is going to be my answer. When I add up all the torques, I'm going to get zero out because it's not spinning. Now to figure out, visualize what's going on, I'm going to use something called the pencil test. So I'll take a pencil, put it on my body, with my one finger, I'm going to hold down the pivot point that I've chosen. With my other finger, I'm going to apply a force at the right location. So now I can visualize what the beam's going to do. So this beam is going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. That means when I add them up, it's going to be a positive torque around the center of mass location. The next force is going to be the weight of the beam right in the middle. And so I've got the finger at the pivot point holding my pencil still. I'll apply a force in the direction of the weight. It's going to rotate my pencil down. So that's going to be a clockwise rotation. That's going to be a negative torque. A negative torque. So in my expression, I'm going to have minus the torque at where the beam's mass is located. Now if I continue this process for box B, when I do box B, I'll have my pencil test. I'll hold the pencil at the pivot point. I'll take my finger, and I'll push it down in a clockwise direction. So that's going to make this a negative torque at the location of box B's mass. So in my setup, my equation down here, I'm going to write minus the torque due to the box at B's location. So the sum of all the torques is equal to zero in this case. Now what I need to do is define what the torque is. So the first torque is going to be the weight of everything that's holding, that the center of mass imaginary force is holding up. So I'm going to leave that as MCM just for the moment times G. And that's times the distance to that location, so I'll subscript that with CM, XCM. Minus the weight of the beam, because it's minus the torque in my top equation. Minus the weight of box B, because again, it's minus in the top equation that's up there. Now the G's divide out, because there's a G in every expression that I have, so I divide both sides of the expression by G, and they'll go away. My equation now looks like this. 
without the G's and without my units. So I've suppressed my units for this step. Now when I look at this, the mass of the center of mass, that imaginary force, is holding up the mass of everything. So that MCM is equal to the mass of the beam plus the mass of the box plus the mass of B. So I'm just replacing MCM with what it actually is, which is the mass of everything being held up. Even box A, even though it doesn't appear earlier in the torque, this isn't about torque at this point. This is just equating the masses. Okay, make a little bit of room. Now from this point, what I'll do is I'll solve for the distance to the center of mass at X subscript CM. And when I solve it, I get mass of the beam times 150 times mass of the box, or plus mass of the box times 3, divided by the sum of all the masses. Put in my numbers, suppressing my units in this case, and I get that the center of mass is 1.01 meters on the left. So I replace my x with 1.01 meters. So to summarize everything we talked about that's really important with this. To begin with, torques come in positive and negative values. Positive values cause a counterclockwise rotation. Negative values cause a clockwise rotation. That's just a, a standard way of writing it. The formula for finding the center of mass, x to the center of mass, I add up the torque due to each object's weight. That's mass 1, x1, mass 2, x2. Now I'm saying weight, but all the g's divide out, so it becomes mass because the g's all divide out. So mass of 1 times the distance to that location, mass of 2 times the distance to that location. I can pick my pivot point anywhere I want to. Left side, middle, at the center of mass, or the right side, or even off the beam. Doesn't matter, just that x, that distance from where I select to where the force is applied. All that's divided by the total of all the masses, that are all the weights that my imaginary center of mass force is holding up.